David Barnson with me this morning. David, we do have a war, and we've also got a modest rally today and a big rally yesterday. Do you want to explain this? Well, it's been going on for three weeks that you've had a lot of volatility, and and bond yields are really to blame, is that uh, yields dropped when the war first started back October 7th, and then I think as bond yields came higher, the rally fizzled, and we've had big sell-off days and big rally days. This has been part of a two-year prediction of a directionless market. We think the market is going up and down all over the place. It's also dead flat for two years. Yeah, That's sure. really the trend, is that you go up and down 8% here, four percent there, but you're not moving. The market's running in place, Stuart. The the market is surely getting some strength because they don't expect a rate increase from the Fed tomorrow, and earnings so far have been pretty good. So that's a boost for the market as well. Yeah, earnings have been pretty good, but they have been uh, a little subpar for certain sectors, certain companies. It's a little more of a mixed bag with earnings than last quarter was, and the markets have not expected any rate hike for some time. That's priced in. The whole question about rates, I don't think they're going to raise again, not this meeting, not next meeting, yeah. not any other meeting. The question is when they start to cut. How long are they going to stay this high? Because they are definitely tightening financial conditions, even just by staying still. Address this, too. $776 billion will be borrowed by the United States Treasury in the next three months. Now, that seems to me to be a very high number. And I think, with the, surely, that'll have some impact on interest rates, won't it? Well, uh, not really when the market knows it's going to happen. The mar they've been running over trillion-dollar deficits for basically 15 years. Where's that money going to come from? Well, where where they borrow it. That's what the whole point of uh, from who? Treasury is. The, who, who's buying the bonds? Yes. We still have huge appetite from foreign investors and huge appetite from domestic investors. The question is, if rates come down, will investors still continue to buy? But, Stuart, I want to be clear here. Go. They've been saying this for 30 years, that people are going to stop buying Treasury bonds. They don't stop buying them. Sure. The dollar is the world's reserve currency. People have to turn their dollars into a safe asset. That's what Treasuries are. That's what Treasuries are regardless of the yield. Thanks for pointing that out. Yes, sir. Good stuff, David. Stay with me, please. You were here for the hour. You lucky guy. Donald Trump has mm -hmm. he's, he's first and he's got a big lead. You think he's going to win, don't you? I think that uh, if he loses in Iowa, there's a possibility of the momentum changing. And we've seen this before. But look, the Iowa winner has v most often not gone on yeah. to win the Republican nomination. Ted Cruz, uh, back in 2016. Well, and Santorum, <laughs> Huckabee. I mean, yeah. it's been a few times. Interesting stuff, isn't it? Thank you, David. Let's get back to Apple. Uh, below 170 this morning, yeah. and they've just unveiled some new products. Are they going to later on today? What's they, the new product? They did. Uh, next generation custom made processors. They're the horsepower needed to develop artificial intelligence applications. Ahead of the holidays, Mac sales are down sharply. David is laughing. Why? You know that computers, PC, uh, actual Mac sales is a lower percentage of Apple's revenue than cookies are at McDonald's? Uh, really? <laughs> they sell iPhones. That's what Apple sells, is iPhones. But they the, can't ignore The iPad is second, the AirPods are there. But no, the PCs are such a low percentage, they just cannot move the needle. And uh, to the prior guest point, it's trading at 30 times earnings. So talking about a new chip in the PC that is a cookie at McDonald's, I just don't think it can move the needle. So you don't stock. think much to Apple, 168 and heading south, with uh, not much of a dividend. No, it's a, 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 a half a percent dividend yield. They need to return more money to shareholders, and this stock will go higher. And you wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. If they return you? more money to shareholders, <laughs> oh, oh, but I will right, right, right. touch it with more than a 10-foot pole. Some, com <laughs> oh, some companies reported earnings before the bell yeah. today. That will be Caterpillar, up on the year and uh, down from up, the high. Up 1% on the year, down 17% okay. from late summer. And David wouldn't that touch drop, it? That drop is pretty much the whole Dow's drop right there. That's almost okay. all of the Dow's drop is yeah. one company. Okay, good. Down 80 right yeah. now on the Dow. Okay. No, we, and by the way, we like Caterpillar, but we chose not to get in because of valuation. Yeah, we, okay. have, we do not own it. Uh, JetBlue. They call the air traffic control uh, situation and the weather events over the summer staggering. Down 11% yep. at three bucks. Good heavens. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Yeah. If they think that the sta delays were staggering for them, they should see how their passengers felt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you've got it on you today. Maybe they tell. should give out McDonald's cookies. Oh, there you go. Uh, Pinterest, they are surging this morning, yeah. and I want to know why. Because their sales are surging. Double digits. Monthly active users increased 8%. Any comment? 
Uh, Pinterest lost $200 million on the quarter, and that's considered good news. <laughs> Don't touch shiny objects. You have to find companies that make money in this environment. I'm sorry. You have to. You've got a lot of sense there, Lada. You really <laughs> do. You. I can tell. <laughs> David is with us. You've got the dividend stocks that you brought with you, and the first one is Chevron. Yeah, I brought up Chevron because they had a really tough quarter. They missed expectations in both revenue and earnings, and um, it caused the stock to drop about 7% Friday. So we came in. We've owned this for many, many years. We're up huge. We Our basis in it is very low, but we were adding to the stock on Friday. Uh, we really like this Hess deal. They bought Hess, and they paid for it entirely with the stock. They didn't have to use cash or use debt or lever up the company. The free cash flow is still gigantic, and we really just think that investors missed the boat on Friday. This was uh, all part of the big picture where Chevron and Exxon both are. They have huge market share and it's growing. And the Biden administration is the gift that keeps on giving to Chevron and Exxon. Their policies hurt smaller companies and help big oil. Dividend payment, Chevron? Oh, yeah. It's over 4% and growing every year for over 60 years. Case closed. Simon Property Group. I was yeah. thinking of this mall operators. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, well, they, are, they own uh, 272 of the best malls in America. Um, they are are at a record level of occupancy, over 95 percent, a record level of rent being charged per square foot, over $56 a foot, over a 7 percent dividend yield. That always gets Stuart Varney's attention. 7 percent is good. And they are executing across the board. Really wonderful quarter from Simon Property. 7 percent is safe. Very safe. I like it. OK. If you're not careful, I'll buy that thing. I want to thank David for being with us for the hour. All good stuff.